टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू बी टॉकिंग अबाउट वन ऑफ माय फेवरेट नोट्स इन माया एंड दैट इज ए आई करवेचर एंड यू सीन अ बेट वाई इट्स माय वन ऑफ माय फेवरेट नोट्स एंड ए आई करवेचर इज बेसिकली अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ द कर्स एंड क्रिएटिंग असन टाइप ऑफ मास्क which later on you can use that mask to create multiple layers of dirt or weathering and so on so we'll see so this is my basic setup here i have two area lights one backdrop and one 3d model that's it so if i show you the overall ipr let me just turn this on all right so there you go so this is what we have now as you can see i have already built a shader to explain how this works and so on so here you'll notice that you get this greenish tint on the other hand you'll also get that whitish weathering look as well so how can we build this how can we use this all right so i'm going to close this quickly i'm going to apply a new shader just so we can start from scratch and i'm going to call this curvature all right oh, there we go Let's make the weight to one, and let's go to the hyper shade. So this is uh, the first graph editor, the shader I built, where you will see I have a simple ramp just to drive the overall color. Then I have the curvature and a simple add node to add the color into the curvature, and then plugged into the base color, and that's it. So we'll do something similar to that, and um, I'm gonna take a shader ball, and uh, yeah there you go so i'm going to go to arnold and you'll see here ai curvature this is exactly what you want i'm going to click on this and you'll get a couple of options we'll discuss what these are and um, so the first thing i'm going to do is attach the color to the base color just directly so we can see so instantly uh, you'll see that instead of like if i deattach this let's say i have something like maybe a green color i'll attach my base color the out color to the base color you'll see we have this black and white mask going on so what curvature is deciding is basically curvature map understands where the curves are or where the bevels and edges are and it creates that mask around it so we have a couple of options uh, the first thing is the output which has three options convex concave and if you are familiar with the medical term the concave and convex convex and concave lenses then you're pretty familiar with this thing so what convex will do is try to mask the outside part and what con concave will do is try to mask the inside part so it's like uh, those mirror that the for example those people who cannot see the closer or the far objects they get these type of lenses depending upon what they their issue is so right now what we are using is the con convex which is masking the outside part here you will see so the next thing that we have is the amount of samples and the more samples you have the more amount of great quality you are going to get now obviously at this point this shader ball is pretty self like uh, pretty small not that unique or not that complex so we don't actually have to mess around with a lot of samples here so i think for this type of object the samples three are good enough but if you look at our scene the model here is pretty complex you have a lot of wrinkles going on a lot of curves and everything so for that i guess we have to take a bit more samples than that so i'll keep it around eight just for now and then you have the radius and the radius on decide how much radius is going to be how much coverage is going to cover for the overall curvature here so you'll see uh, that when we had the default value which was 0.100 we don't get that much um curvature in the middle but as i go further and further you'll get more of that radius going on now the next thing that we have is the spread and spread uh, decides how much spread it's going to be from the edges for example if i reduce this spread you'll notice that the overall curvature gets a bit more sharper around the edges not the overall curvature but around the edges so here you'll see we get this if i combine this with something like maybe a radius to something like a bit more like this you will get a bit more a dense denser look here so you can see so we are kind of it's like opacity you are basically increasing and reducing the opacity amount of that curvature so i'm gonna hit 0.100 again and then you have the threshold which i barely use but it is for the normalized angle and uh, then we have the bias which again I've never used 
and I don't think I ever will because honestly you only need th three things to understand in the curvature that is radius spread and multiply and we'll get into what multiply is and bias is basically the fall off of the overall curvature so if I increase this you'll see the overall fall off but I don't think we will ever need to touch this since our work will be done with the multiply spread and radius so what multiply is basically the overall strength of the curvature if you increase this you will see we have much denser look and something like this I'm gonna keep this to one and let's try it on our model so I'm gonna close this I'm gonna hit my IPR and let's see alright so here you'll see that we get a bit of this curvature look I'm gonna quickly increase my resolution to 2k Alright, so you'll see that we get curvature but it's not that uh, noticeable at least here it is but not in the face area so I'm going to select this and go to the curvature and in the base color we'll go in our curvature and from here actually we don't have to increase the amount of radius here because I think the amount of radius here is good enough for the curves and everything but if you want you can increase and you'll see it covers the whole face so I'm going to keep it to 100 what I'm do what I'm gonna do is reduce a bit of the spread to maybe like 0 0.900 and you'll start to see that we are getting much sharper edges here and I'm gonna increase the multiply and see how multiply is overall reacting to the curvature the more multiply you add the more sharper the overall curvature gets so before it was something like this something like this and then when you increase it we'll have much sharper look of curvature going on so this is how you can use it i'm gonna keep the multiply to maybe somewhere around three i think that looks pretty good and from here it totally depends on you how you want this effect to be driven like so i can change this to concave maybe like both and then you can use this mask to drive something else which we'll see in the next video but yes you totally have different kinds of option to pretty much do anything so this looks pretty good to me and let's try to add some color into this so adding a color into curvature is pretty easy there are multiple ways we can do this but i think uh, we are going to go for a simpler way let's just take a simple ramp ramp rgb and someone in the inst on my instagram dm said they don't have the rgb ramp and rgb float options and the reason is because rgb ai rgb ramp was introduced in maya 2020 so if you have a little bit earlier version of Maya you probably don't have RAM but you can use the native RAM network shader as well so I'm gonna select the ramp and let's take a simple add and uh, in the ramp I'm gonna take maybe like let's take maybe this I'm gonna I'm just gonna have one color attach this to the input one and out color to the input two and attach this to the base color and there we go and you can have multiple color if you want i've already made a video on ai ramp so i don't think i have to cover that again uh, but yeah so you can pretty much change the color you want you can have something like like this totally depends on you so this is how you can uh, use ai curvature in the next video we'll see how we can use this ai curvature mask to create some edge weathering so that's it for this one i hope you like this video and i'll see you in the next video